Welcome to Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero, here to show you the EDC junk I've got in my pockets. This week, we've got the Zero Feud compact utility pouch in the black and gold, repping my hometown colors aesthetic. We've got some sweet ranger eyes, knives, patches, pocket trash, so I hope you're ready to enjoy. I've got a couple of new extra little fangs to show you this week, and a new take on something I've talked about before. Hope you're ready, because we're about to just dive right in. The compact utility pouch comes in a myriad of styles and fabrics, but this week we're going to be checking out the 500D Nylon. This is the black and gold Pittsburgh Steelers edition. I'm just kidding. On one side we've got a large loop here for you to put cards into. The whole thing zippers all the way around, opens up clamshell so you've got access to all of the gear that you've got inside of here. I've replaced the zipper pole with a 52 Graves Wu-Tang Death Cookie Bead. It's a nice paracord here in the black and gold. And the other side is just a full web field for all your sweet Ranger Eye patches. And boy do I have some sweet ones this week. From Twilight Patch Co., we've got the Space Pirate. Casa de Legmo Designs Hack the Planet. The RB Studios and Pondium Syndicate Final Thanos Snap That Sinking Feeling Collab. From Phytonics, the Vaporwave Sunset. And the Tough and Stuff Gear Coqui Creations Gundam Cause Two Face Collab. For that matchy matchy black and gold aesthetic. Like I said, I replaced the zipper pole on this. I replaced almost all of them on the cuffs. I like them way more when you have a nice big chunky zip here. It also kind of works like a lanyard to help pull it out of your cargo pocket a little bit easier. So here on the inside, I generally set up a cup about the same way. In the small divided pocket, I keep a flashlight. In the back pocket, I keep my knife. And then on the other side, wherever I feel like it, I keep pocket trash. And then I either put my cards here on the inside or here on the outside, just depending on how I'm feeling that day. So let's start with pocket trash this week. I almost never do that. From Lautier EDC, we've got the Brass and Copper Pocket Aces Edition Shuffle Fidget Toy. This is a grail fidget toy that I quested for for a super long time. This is from their 2099 series. Got a little Joker skull, Jester skull here on the back. The Ace of Spades and Copper here on the front. And then the Ace of hearts in brass on the back. Now the way that this thing works is we've got a nice little hinge here and then we've got a set of magnets embedded into both pieces of these metal. The hinge just allows it to freely go back and forth. Some of the magnets are recessed, some of them are raised on the other side, and it creates just a little track that these are able to effortlessly click in and out of. These things aren't strictly ambidextrous. I feel like it's a little off left-handed, but right-handed, man, this is just so super satisfying. I can click this thing all day long. You can go with a little bit of downward pressure, make it much quieter. Not quite silent, but quieter. But just generally, this is a very, very noisy fidget toy. I collect playing cards, so anything that has a playing card motif, especially pocket aces, is my jam. So from Lautier EDC, the Pocket Aces Brass and Copper Edition, super patinaed, super haggard, use your shit, my favorite anxiety tool, the shuffle fits perfectly right in the little slit pocket here on the front. Keeps it nice and easy. You just kind of give it a little push from the bottom if you want to pop it out. On the flashlight game this week, from Roy V. Van, this is the A9CU Micro USB Copper Flashlight with a knurled copper bead from my buddy at Butterfield Machine Company. This flashlight is about the size of a AAA battery and it goes up to about 450 lumens. In turbo mode, it's decently bright and I think it does a perfect job of not being too directly floody that it's impossible to see what you're trying to see with this flashlight. One of my problems with a 600 lumen Roy V van is when it's straight ahead, you almost just can't see what you're looking at because it's just so absolutely bright. I think that this thing is the perfect number of lumens for EDC use. If you give it a double tap, it goes into momentary mode with one lumen and then it steps up 
all the way up to its max turbo brightness. Hold it, and it turns off again, and that's pretty much it. There's a secret SOS mode with triple taps that I've never used ever. My only complaint about this flashlight is that it's micro USB, not USB-C. This is the Nichia non-pro edition, and I think that the Nichia is better than the Cree XPL for me and my personal use case. I like the more natural true color light. It's a little bit warmer Kelvin temperature than the XPL, but the XPL is super bright and it almost uh, doubles or adds a hundred lumen or so to the maximum brightness of this flashlight. I purposely chose the A9CU because I wanted a lower lumen output, but still lots and sweet, sweet copper aesthetics. I love me some patina porn, and this thing is just naturally coming along so nicely. Flashlight perfectly fits in the split pocket right here. All the Roy V Vans fit absolutely perfectly in a cup. And this like triple A size battery flashlight is my preferred size for EDC light. I don't need a huge tank on a day-to-day -day basis if I'm gonna just like look under my car seat to find something that I'm looking for or find a toy under the couch for one of my sons. And the, a light like this is just right. On the back side here, we're gonna pull out this week's knife. This is the Rio from 4T5 Designs. This is the black linen micarta and their own in-house Wave Damascus edition. This is a really really sweet knife that I was waiting a very long time for. I don't know why Concept sat on this design for so long before they released them. 4T5 Designs was teasing them for months before they finally came out. But I didn't have the most immediate in love reaction with this knife. I had a little bit of trouble getting the appropriate grip on a front flipper like this in this tiny little form factor. But the magic secret to this knife is a lanyard bead. And I knew that going into this. I, I lived the lanyard life. I knew that there was no pocket clip, there's no extra grip, this thing's tiny, you're gonna need that lanyard bead. But I just couldn't find that perfect matchy matchy black micarta aesthetic until I got this bag bad boy from my dude Andrew at EDC Booze. He's gonna be so triggered because this is one of his older ones that he says is imperfect and he doesn't like as much, but I think it looks awesome. I think the whole aesthetic comes together so perfectly on this knife now. And with the addition of the lanyard bead, thumb flicks, super easy. Inner finger flicks, super easy. Reach around up front, front flipper flicks. I don't know what you call this thing. All so super easy with just that little bit of extra grip that a bead puts on a teeny tiny little knife like this. You know me, I love the smallest knives possible. I think a Spider Co McB is probably my favorite knife ever. This thing is definitely up there in the class of knives that I love. We've got a very thin but super functional liner lock in here. You can see around the back, there's no backspacers, just a series of standoffs, the spot for the lanyard bead to go through, a little hole on either scale, some very slight skeletonization in here, but not too much. It's a very light and very thin knife, but it is sturdy. You can give this thing as hard of a squeeze as you want, and my knuckle even cracked, and it's not going anywhere. It's very nice and very tight. I love this jimping up here on the front. It's the perfect spot for your thumb when you're doing cuts like this. When you reach forward like this, I just feel like it helps you out just a little bit, even though the jimping's not being touched, but very nice. The thing that I don't love about this knife is whatever this Wave Damascus is made out of. I'll be completely honest, I've sharpened this knife already in the time that I've had it. Now. It sharpened super easily in the respect of like it got sharp quickly, but it was difficult with this like drop point, tonto, whatever style grind this is. I kind of ruined the Yakute right here, the area where this grind and this grind meet up. You might not even be able to see it, but it's not perfect there anymore. And that's my fault. I'm not the best sharpener in the world. Definitely never sharpened a Tonto style before. Learning experience. And it's my knife. It's a user. I carry this thing all the time now that I've got a bead on it. I really, really like it. But 
I would suggest getting a nicer, more robust blade steel than this beautiful Damascus. Unless you don't care about sharpening your knives, then go with whatever you want. And anyways, do what you want anyhow. I don't listen to me. I'm just some guy on the internet talking about things he likes. The 45 Designs Rio in micarta with the EDC boo bead in this wave Damascus is just one of my favorite teeny tiny little EDC knives. Just the kind of thing you need for opening packages, getting plastic wrap off stuff, prying open a little bit of the peanut butter lid when you're trying to open a new jar. Just daily normal knife use tasks. Obviously with a teeny tiny knife this size, you're not going to be doing any kind of on the farm type work with this, but I'm a computer nerd. I sit at a desk all day. I don't need that kind of knife, so I don't carry that kind of knife. So that's my hot take on the Rio. I love it now that it's got a bead on it. Highly suggested. Zip that thing up here. Yeah. Like I said, I normally put cards in this. I'm not gonna show you my ID. I think that it fits great on the outside. It's real easy to pull out your debit card, do what you need to do and put it back in. If you're a bit of a Freddy cat, you can use this inner pocket right here. Cards fit in there just right. You can fit probably like six or eight cards if you really wanted a Costanza this thing out. I personally don't normally unzip this thing all the way. I oftentimes just zip it around the front, peek in there, grab my knife, do what I need to do, slide it right back in, zip it up and I'm done. Back into the cardinal pocket with it. Now, let's talk about what else is in my pockets. I've got this wonderful, snotty, disgusting Hank from Happy Hanks. Hilarious Golden Girls print on here. Just reminds me of my grandma. I call this Hank Grandma's Love. It's got some like pink curtain look on the back. This is generally just the kind of Hank that you use in allergy season when you're all snotty and you just gotta clean your face off. And it's a fact of life that I have allergies and I have to deal with snot. So carry a Hank, it's always important. Now because I'm carrying my pouch so light today, I thought I might just show off a couple of the other pieces that aren't in the pouch that are new that you might wanna check out. From my dude, Andrew Hamilton of EDC Booze, we've got the Fat Nook in Joker colorway, a purple and glow-in-the-dark green SFK single finger nook or fidget spinner type tool with a matching bead here on the back. It is ginormous. This is like the size of a full-size concealed combat bead. That being said, with a big bead, you get all kinds of big spins with this action, and I really am enjoying it. Now, this thing is super duper smooth. It, there's just, it's effortlessly spinning on your finger, almost to the point where it wants to come off really easy. That's okay, because this thing is quite durable. I've dropped it a number of times already. Might see a little bit of battle scar on the edge there, maybe you don't, but I've dropped it a number of times already just on dog walks, fidget spinning, as I do. I think that this thing is great because it is non-metal, it is just resin that glows in the dark, and it is a fun little fidget spinner. I don't really know what else to say. These kind of spinners get me. I like being able to just put something on my finger and let the weight spin around. I think I like spinning it backwards a little bit more, to be honest with you. You get that sort of like cowboy, I'm gonna pull my gun out and slide it back in kind of vibe to it. Oh, shoe doggy. But anyways, from EDC Booze, the Fat Nuck in the Joker colorway, a fun little SFK fidget toy, fidget spinner that I've been rocking and dropping a lot lately. Also, of course, I am still rocking the Pixel Company Alt-F mechanical keyboard fidget toy. I've got two caps on here, both from GMK Night Runner, just some cool cityscape action. And I've replaced the switches once again on this guy. These are Canon Keys Neapolitan ice cream switches. Just the king of thock. And uber, uber, like ultra tactile switches. These things are just endlessly fun to clack on and get out your nervous energy. I often give it the pinch like this, roll it in my hand and just go to town. I have a ton of artisan keycaps. It's fun for me to accessorize these with different colorways and put them in my Instagram photos, but I also just really enjoy fidgeting with it. Artisans look good on this tool, but I don't think that they sound or feel as good as real GMK keycaps do. 
These come in a couple different designs. I have an all titanium one that has been Zer blasted. This is a prototype V3. Check out the video up in the corner right now if you want to see my full unboxing experience with this guy. But yeah, I just love the Alt F from Pixel Company. I have endless fun clacking away at this thing. And finally, the Ambernick RG35 X Pocket Emulator. This is just a really great game console. This thing is just an awesome little handheld pocket emulator. It can emulate everything from the original Nintendo, Game Boy, Sega, all the way up to PlayStation 1. There's custom firmware that you can install on this guy that allows you to play other different game consoles that don't come out of the box on this thing. It allows you to change the colors and all of the inputs and stuff like that in it too. I've just been really loving this thing. The shoulder buttons on the back feel really good. This big IPS screen, just it's beautiful. It looks amazingly crispy in the dark. The buttons feel good. The D-pad leaves a little bit to desire. I hear there's a mod you could do with electrical tape on the circuit board. I might try when I do my garlic OS hack on this thing. But I've just been really exploring the standard stock firmware and loving this device. My son and I have just been having endless fun playing old retro games, and I, I enjoy showing him my childhood in gaming. I've got that in the Zero Feud Compact Utility Pouch Size A, the larger edition. It's covered in Ranger Eyes from Future Relic Knives and Smash Brothers Gear, the Weirdo Wario collab. This guy just fits perfectly into this case. Zip it up all the way around the edges. You're good to go. Got a little GameCube kind of inspired zipper pull on this too from a seller on Etsy. I'll link down in the description below. But this is just, it's with me in my bag all of the time. I love that game console so much and I just can't stop playing it. So I'm going to give it another feature this week. If you're going to order from datacrewla.com, don't forget to use my discount code XERO15. Get you 15% off your entire order. No kickbacks to me, just helping you out from one of my sort of unofficial sponsors for this channel, though I featured none of their gear this week. Also, I've started a Discord server. Chat.zero.style will get you into the server. I've sort of built a little mini community, and I think I've got things set up the way that I want to now. So you're welcome to join if you want to talk about knives, pocket trash, patches. It all goes down there. Share me your pics. I would like to do a sort of I'm going to show off your EDC photos kind of video in the future. So throw those in the EDC Picks channel. I've got roles where if you want to get notifications about trash drops or patch drops that I can at you and you can be a part of a group and then you'll get notifications for when just random makers that I enjoy drop stuff. If you're into that, if not, you don't have to sign up for that. But just come hang out. Let's have some banter and chats about fun stuff. Also keyboards because that's, I just, I'm a nerd and you're going to talk about the things that I like on my chat server. It's just how it is. Thank you for still sticking around all the way to the end of the video. I'm going to do a little secret giveaway. If you are interested in this the Castle Grayscale Good Luck Patch. I want you to comment down below that you love llamas. You can say whatever else you want in the comments, but I'm going to look for people who use the word llama, L-L-A-M-A, in the comments down below, and I will do a little giveaway to this patch. It was given to me by Castle Grayscale. I actually got two of them, so I'm going to pass this love on to someone else. So yeah, comment down below how much you love llamas if you want this patch. Everybody needs a little good luck in their life, don't you think? And I'm ready to spread that around. Anyhow, that is the Pouch Dump episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, toss me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. Click these boxes appearing around my face as I do this outro if you want to watch more of my videos right now. And if no one has told you today, you're a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one later on.